So we have seen from the Chinese manufacturers various different Helio X20 DecaCore tablets. And now it is Tech Last Turn. So what they've done is their approach is slightly different. They've gone with the Helio X23, which is just a tweaked version of that same chipset. It's slightly faster with a 2.3 gigahertz maximum turbo and it also has a slightly faster GPU clock. So that's going to hopefully aid in performance because in my experience with these tablets, which are all very similar, gaming performance on very demanding games hasn't been the greatest. While you can still play them, it tends to be a little bit laggy. So this model has 4 gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of storage. It has wireless AC and dual SIMs in there. So the dual SIM support is LTE, so you get 4G support. FM radio, you can also make voice calls with it and it does even have GPS. So for about the 160 price tag that this is currently selling for, it does have a lot on offer. The screen is also high resolution like the others, 2560 by 1600. Now just be careful with band support with these tablets because this one here, it has band one and three, which are bands that are uh, commonly used in Europe while in Spain here. I'm not gonna have any trouble. So we've got that 1800 megahertz 4G LTE, but no LTE band 20 and some of the more common ones. So it's not really like a global LTE modem that they are using with this particular model here. So it's uh, well packaged up, you can see, and I can see already that it's got that protective screen protector on it. So put the tablet aside for just a second and we'll take a look at what else is here in the box. So there is an instruction manual in here that is Chinese, but also in English. There's some sort of warranty card and it's right here. So quality control check pass, which is good to see. That means that someone has actually checked this out and checked it for faults. So inside the largest white box here, we get the power supply, which is rated to five volts, 2.5 amps. So no, it's not supporting MediaTek's Pump Express. And then our charging cable, which is USB to micro USB. So this is just USB 2. So we don't have Type-C on this one, unfortunately. The cable is a quality one, it's rather thick, and that'll make sure and ensure that we're getting that 2.5 amps going through to it, but it's not very long. Okay, as you can see, I just pulled it out of that white slip and already I can tell that this is not a fully laminated panel. Now I did have my doubts with the price of this, this being fully laminated. It was tech last, I think, uh, sorry, Gearbest, that listed it as OGS, which means one glass solution, and clearly it's not. Now I estimate that gap between the touch digitizer glass and then the IPS panel below to be about two millimeters. You can see it's quite a substantial gap there. Hopefully it's not gonna be uh, very distracting. So you can see the frame around the screen is plastic. Then that clips into the unibody alloy housing on the rear. We've got one speaker grill right here, and then you can see the volume and power buttons. Now it looks like it's made out of metal, but of course for this price range, they're gonna to have to cut a few corners somewhere. Uh, they feel like they're just like that chrome imitation metal, but they've got a good feel to them. And I've checked them out, they don't rattle around. Now this little tiny hole here is a reset button. Down the bottom is where you'll find the microphone. It's facing outwards, which is good. There's this tiny little slit there and that will let the sound in. So on the left hand side, you'll see the other speaker grill. So it does have stereo speakers, which is good. And in this video, I will test their volume, of course. And then along the back, we have the TechLast logo with a five megapixel auto focus camera that will not have very good quality. I can guess that already. So this top portion is all plastic for the 4G wireless and Bluetooth reception there and even GPS, because this does have GPS, this model. So we need to remove this plastic on the back, and it is actually really hard to first get off. It clips in there really well. You see we've got that USB, micro USB port, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack with microphone support, and I've managed to get that off. So I've already put my SIM in here, ready for when I power this on for the first time. It takes two micro SIMs, and there's a space there for your micro SD card, up to 128 gigabytes, they claim and I shall just check the weight of it like I do with all of my videos. It comes in at 601 grams, so it's not super light, but for a 10.1 inch with the metal build, I feel it's okay, it's reasonable. And then the thickness of it is 9.8 millimeters, so it's not the slimmest tablet here, and that is probably because of the non-laminated screen. So I must give Tech Last credit where due that even though this is a budget tablet, I feel the build quality is good, it's solid, there's no creaks, there's no flex, and nothing really is moving around. So it feels solid enough in hand, and I do like the fact that they have gone with this gray matte coated paint job on the alloy unibody. 
So I have removed the screen protector completely. I tried to remove just the first layer and I ended up lifting up the uh, layer behind it and I got a few air bubbles on it. So I've just completely just thrown it away now, just screwed it up. So once that tablet is on, the screen is not so reflective now. Now I'll show you the screen in detail in just one minute, but I first wanted to point out here the stock apps we have. So we have FM radio as well on there and really no bloatware whatsoever, which is really good. Now this is running Android 8.0. And the security patch level is August the 5th, which is really recent. It's this month, so that's great. Now, there is a wireless update system if TechLast need to push out any bug fixes, but at the time of this video, there are none at the moment, so it's up to date. So our bezels are very similar to the other tablets I've looked at. They're not the slimmest at all, so top and bottom bezels are large, and even the sides. That is just the way it is with the screen they're using. So the ROM performance, I just wanted to comment, it's nothing like the Chewy HI9 Pro that I just recently reviewed with the Halio X20. That one had three gigabytes of RAM and it did feel quite choppy in the UI, but not the case here. It is actually a lot smoother. So going into your settings and things and scrolling is just so much smoother. And even the uh, animation just to rotate the screen as well. When you do that, that comes through quite smooth. So the screen has a maximum brightness of 200 lux, which may not seem enough. It's certainly not going to be enough for outdoors with the non-laminated panel, but for indoors, I find that it's actually perfectly fine. So for the rest of this review, I will actually be using it at about approximately 50%, which looks good on camera here. With my current settings, when I put it up to 100, you can see that's going to really overpower things now. And I'll just show you again that brightness set down to zero. So at zero, this is really good. It's nice and dull, good for late nighttime use without getting sore eyes looking at it. I wish more manufacturers would do this because some of them set them far too bright. Now the screen's gamma is really good. It's almost 2.2. It's about 2.1 you can see when it blends in with the background gray. So this is good. Out of the box, the screen whites are maybe a little bit off. They're not actually too bad, but the good thing is that the MediaTek tablets have what's called mirror vision, and this allows you to adjust the colors to your own personal preference. So it's in standard mode, you can adjust it to vivid, and then user mode is when you get access to uh, everything here. So you can go along and then start to tweak the sharpness, the saturation, contrast, pretty much everything you can think of. Real world images as well do look good. Now I wanted to point out with my unit, this will vary from IPS panel to IPS panel, that when it's showing just black, you get some color light leakage just on the side here, but you don't really see it when you're using the screen like right now when you're displaying games or images, but it's actually quite a nice screen this one. It's a sharp panel and the resolution is 2560 by 1600. So overall good, it's just because it's not fully laminated here we are getting a lot of reflections, which is probably the only real downside to the screen. And the maximum brightness means that this will not be good outdoors if you wanted to use GPS. So here's some dark colors there, and now you can see just how much the glass is reflecting. And keeping on the topic of the screen, so when you take a look at something like an ebook, which I have right now, this is just a Dan Brown's Inferno, and you can see very clear, and it does look sharp, the text, because of the resolution. Video files also look great on the screen, now they're not going to be the fastest, this will never beat iPad performance. The latest iPads, they're just so much better at processing PDF files, especially large ones here. Now looking at the Helio X23, so this has 10 cores, and we've got 8 of the Cortex-A53s, and then 2 of the much faster A72s, which clock right up to 2.31 GHz. So that is, I believe, 200 MHz faster than the Helio X20. And the GPU on this one is the Mali T880, which isn't a very powerful GPU. It's rather weak. The ones you get, like the Power VR GPUs on the likes of Teclast Master T10, perform much better. So the M24 G does not have security level one for Widevine. This is DRM info. So what this translates, this jargon, means that uh, Netflix, you can't run it in anything but just the standard definition. So no HD, no full HD uh, with this particular tablet. Triple support. Unfortunately, we don't have access to both the partitions A and B. They've only got just slot A. So that means that we're not going to be able to have uh, custom ROMs on this so easy. I don't know if there's going to be a way around this. This is our Antutu score. So it checks out. It's around 100,000 normally for the Helio X20. And it doesn't really seem to be that much faster 
than that particular model, even though it's got 200 megahertz more on the top clock speed. So Teclas did not skimp on the eMMC. While it's not eMMC 5 spec, this is 4.5.1, these speeches are, are actually quite decent. They're good, so this is not going to bottleneck the system like some of the crappy eMMCs, the really slow ones, we have seen on some of Chewy's Helio X20 tablets. Testing out the 4G speeds, they're not too bad here, so you, you get approximately 20. It's all going to depend, of course, on your network. So it's not really that relevant, but I had no trouble downloading, viewing web pages. Signal strength is good, wireless signal strength is well, no problems. Voice calls, yes, I have made a voice call with this. Quality is okay, I recommend using a headset. It does use the mic on the front and the loudspeakers. So it's not amazing, but it's still great to be able to at least make voice calls with a tablet like this, especially priced at 160 US. Wireless AC speeds, they actually check out to be pretty good. Um, not bad at all, so I'm impressed with these speeds. You can't get the full max out of my fiber line, for example, which is 300, and that's because the wireless AC here just will not permit that, but still, for the chipset, it is not bad. GPS, well, not amazing. We don't have a hardware compass on this one, sadly, and I did expect this for the price. Your accuracy is going to hover around 3 to 4 meters, sometimes up to 5 and 6. It'll see a lot of satellites, but it doesn't tend to lock onto them. MediaTek's GPS for me just does not seem to ever be as good as Qualcomm's, the other major ARM chip manufacturer. So video streaming, this is YouTube right here, and what I'm testing out is 1440p quality, doesn't drop any frames, it runs well, you can see quality 1440p, keeps up with it, the same with Amazon Prime, no problems. General performance of the tablet is reasonable. Now I've noticed that when you go into split screen, for example, in my testing, that you do notice a performance hit. Now this happens with the other Helio X20 tablets and some of the other MediaTek ones too there, like the hexacores, they will slow down a little and it really depends on what you're doing. But going through, selecting things, the UI, it all tends to be uh, pretty fast. It's not the fastest, smoothest tablet out there that you will use with Android. But I will tell you one thing though, that this out of the MediaTek tablets I have tested, it does seem to be one of the smoother ones. But I still recommend, if you can, go for something like Teclas Master T10 or the Qualcomm powered Snapdragon 660 uh, Mi Pad 4. That's probably one of the fastest, smoother Android tablets that I have reviewed. But overall, for most people, I feel it's going to be good. Now one area of weakness of these tablets is normally the speakers. So we've got a positive here that we've got two side firing speakers as I showed you the start of the video. So one here on the other side. Now they sound okay, there's not a huge amount of bass. They lack a little bit in volume, but overall I feel they are decent. It depends on the content that you are watching. So if the content starts off to be loud like a game anyway, then they'll be perfectly fine. But some movies you will find it a little lacking. But I will give you a sample of it now. And moving on to battery life, so these are estimates here. So I've used the screen for one hour and I lost, well just over one hour actually, 16%. Now it's giving me estimates of about seven hours. So this is with the screen set to 50%, mixed kind of use. Now if you're going to be gaming on this, expect about five hours of battery life or your screen brightness is a lot higher of course, it's going to lower down. Now charge times, when I got it this had like no battery in it whatsoever, so I plugged it in and one hour and 30 minutes later, I was up to 85% battery. So it's gonna be just under two hours to fully charge it. And onto gaming performance. So this title is Lineage 2 Revolutions. It's on the low settings, high frame rate, and it's perfectly fine playable. The game is definitely playable, but it is certainly not the fastest you will see this game running. There is a little bit of lag, there's a little bit of stutter. The frame rate does dip down now and then. But it is overall still playable, which is the main thing. And here we are in PUBG. So the game is playable, but the frame rate is not perfect. This is on the medium frame rate, lowest smooth visual graphics setting. And I've got someone that was just shooting at me. You can see when you zoom in, that frame rate does actually dip off quite a bit, making it a little bit difficult here to aim. I really do need to get a little bit closer with this guy. Okay, he's shooting back at me. See if I can at least get one kill. 
All right, so one kill, that is possible. So this performance isn't ideal, but it is performing faster than the Chewy HI9 Pro that I checked out. So that one has only the three gigabytes of RAM, and it also has uh, just the H, sorry, the Helio X20 only. So slightly slow clock rate, but it's not really making much of a difference here because the GPU is the overall weakness with this chipset when it comes to gaming. So here is a sample of the front facing camera. I've turned off my powerful studio lights. I've just got a normal room light on and you can see the quality is pretty average. It's a little blurry. It is in 1080p at least and the sound quality from the front facing mic is okay. So not amazing quality here but you will be able to use it for voice chat apps like Skype. And as you can see from this sample the rear camera is horrendous really. I mean just look at this quality. It is disgusting. But I don't imagine that anyone's actually going to be recording video with the rear camera on this. You use your mobile phone and you get 20 times better quality than this. Focus is all over the place. The frame rate isn't great. There's a lot of um, viewfinder lag as well. And just look at that exposure and the sharpness of the video. So there we go. That is the Techlast M20 4G. So overall, for what you're getting on the price, you get actually quite a lot. You've got FM radio, you've got GPS, you can make voice calls dual sim support and micro sd card support on there so what this is lacking okay it doesn't have an ambient light sensor it does not have micro hdmi out which would be really nice to have on these tablets they seem to be dropping it lately performance seems to be reasonably good as long as you don't do any really heavy multitasking gaming performance as you just saw with the games i was testing out so really demanding games like PUBG are going to be a little bit laggy they're still playable but it could be a little bit frustrating at times when there's a lot going on, on the screen. If you get a little bit of smoke and things like that, uh, that's not ideal. But lighter titles, other games, uh, they will actually run fine. So for example, Shadow Fight 3, I have it on here but I didn't show it. That actually runs perfectly fine. That game is playable. So the cameras, as expected, are disappointing. The screen, it does look nice, but it's not fully laminated. So this is probably are going to be a con for some people. It actually doesn't bother me as much as I thought it would. Once you're using it, it's really perfectly fine. So the maximum brightness tops out about 200 lux, which is not ideal. It should be brighter. Hopefully a firmware uh, patch will come through, you know, over the air update, and Techlast can just boost that brightness a little bit. Of course, it will come at the cost of the battery. Now, battery life, decent, up to about seven hours, depending on what you're doing. It's not the best battery life, but I feel it is okay, again, considering the price. Voice, voice call quality, uh, not, not really that good. I almost didn't remember to put it onto the speakerphone, so when you accept a call, you have to tap speakerphone if you don't have a headset plugged in. And that quality of the voice call, hearing that person through those speakers was just really poor, quite muffled. But hey, you can do it, which is great. GPS there as well. GPS performance isn't amazing, but again, it has GPS on this for this price range is really good. So it is offering a lot there with the FM radio as well. Now we don't have Netflix in full HD. It's just going to be standard definition. But any other things, other things like YouTube streaming 1440p work well. Amazon Prime, when it kicks into the higher quality automatically, it looks good. No problems with that either. So overall, as a package, the build quality is good. It's just a few little things there like the LTE bands as well. We don't have a huge amount of coverage. No LTE band 20, so it is missing a few of those there. But as the package, what you're getting for the price is quite a lot. So I feel it's not a bad tablet and definitely one of the, the better Helio tablets, the 4G ones that I have looked at. Now, if you want something that's higher quality, then do check out my review of the Techlust Master T10 and also the Xiaomi Mi Pad 4. Those two are still my current favorites, uh, but they are a lot more expensive, of course, than this $160 tablet here from Techlast. Thank you so much for watching, and I do hope to catch you in the next one. Bye for now.